Hey everybody, this is Intricate from Amiga Love. I wanted to give a quick demonstration on the difference between a stock uh, Amiga 2000 running the game Starflight from Electronic Arts and an enhanced Amiga 2000 uh, with a 40 megahertz uh, accelerator card popped in there. So we're going to take a look at the differences between uh, those two speeds and how it might impact some games like Starflight in particular. Okay guys, so this is the game Starflight, a fantastic uh, space simulator that is really a ripoff on Star Trek down to the nitty gritty. It's a lot of fun if you're into science fiction and if you're into the Star, uh, Star Trek universe. It is very cool. You're the commander of a ship and you create uh, a crew with science officers, navigators, communication officers, all of that kind of thing. And you're actually exposed to a gigantic uh, universe uh, that you explore. And when you're on a stock Amiga, this is a 7 megahertz NTSC uh, Amiga, um, there, are, there are, for whatever reason, painfully slow animations. Uh, for example, here I am in my spaceship on the left viewport, um, just to move around. There's a bit of a delay between my uh, clicking of the keyboard and the actual response on screen. That's not the end of the world. You can get through that, but it is a little sluggish. You can see my guy on the right side in the solar system map just kind of chugging along. It's definitely not a snappy game. Now, at, at this level, from a, from a star map standpoint, it's not that big of a deal. But when you try and land on a planet, you're actually given an option, probably because this game is so slow, you're given an option to, um, to land and open a viewport when, uh, you, decide, when you decide to land your um, all-terrain vehicle. Now there on the left is the actual planet, and it's obviously looking pretty cool. But now I'm going to tell uh, my navigator to, well hang on, I'm going to tell my captain to land this ship. Now check this out. I'm going to select a site, and this is a really cool user interface to be honest, um, and I'm going to tell it to descend. And it's going to say, do you want to open the viewport? And, it def and the reason why they do this is because it's so painfully slow that I'm guessing the vast majority of people, after they've done it once, never want to do it again. So let's go ahead and do it to yes. This is 7 megahertz. Alright, autopilot engaged. We're descending. I'm going to zoom in on this so you guys can take a nice look at this. If you haven't played this game in you know, 25 years, this might refresh your memory. Here we are. We're actually descending. Now, the truth of the matter is, this is probably very close to what it would feel like in real life. A rather slow, tedious process. When it comes to gameplay, it's awful. It's really bad to watch this. You could, you might as well just go paint your fence and watch that paint dry, because it is really, really slow. Now, the reason why I'm even doing this video in the first place is I watched a video of a gentleman on YouTube uh, explain his process of how he played this game and he was doing it um, in a DOS emulator and apparently in that emulator you're given the ability to really juice uh, your machine and he was able to make this feel like um, a, three a three dimensional experience that just flowed like river water. It was unbelievable when I saw it all of this just, this, it wasn't drawing it one little pixel at a time, it was, it felt like you were in a three-dimensional movie. It was really impressive, and I guarantee you nobody back in the day ever saw it that way. It was, it was really slow like this. This is what it looks like on 7 megahertz. What we're going to do here in a little bit is we're going to actually pop in an accelerator card, um, which I have for the 2000, which I believe is called the GeForce... 030, which is kind of a weird name when you consider the fact that uh, this guy is actually 40 megahertz, but I think it's because they made it in uh, multiple speeds, and the one that I have is this guy right here, which you can kind of see. It's stacked with a bunch of RAM, it's got some chips in there to make this guy fly, 
we're going to pop that into the CPU port um, on the Amiga and come back here and do a side-by-side -side comparison. Fingers crossed that the code isn't intentionally made to be slow, or that would really suck. So you have to keep in mind, this, this card that I'm using was made back in the day. It's not uh, anything uh, modern or contemporary. It's, it's actually quite ancient, but it does give us the, uh, the hilarious Kawabunga rating. And um, you can see that it was doing just fine. This should be a very, very good test. And I'll be honest, I've not actually done a side-by-side -side comparison like this before. So I'm going to be doing this for the first time along with you guys, and we'll see how it uh, how it handles. You can see right over here, it's now sitting at 40.3 megahertz, and uh, we're 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 doing pretty well. We've also got uh, you know two megs of uh, of chip RAM, and I've got somewhere in the ballpark of about 18 megs of RAM. Although the truth is, I don't really think that matters. It's really all about the CPU. In terms of how it processes uh, this animation. So let's go check it out. I've gone ahead and uh, spared you the boredom of watching me load this sucker up and put in the the code from the, the fantastic code wheels of back in the day. Um, Alright, so I can already tell you uh, from this early moment that some pieces of animation that we didn't watch together in the past uh, has already sped up significantly to my surprise uh, by how fast it is. Um, there are a couple of pieces that you missed uh, in the earlier clips which I should point out here. If you're familiar with this game you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. This is a classic that was uh, very popular not just on the Amiga but on, on DOS as well. Um, there's a moment where your captain can uh, walk around inside the space station and before I did the upgrade it was unbelievably slow watching him walk from room to room to, uh, to perform the various tasks that you have to go through to get this game done. Now he just zips right across the floor like you would expect him to. To be quite frank, I have no idea why this game was coded to be so slow uh, natively in the Amiga because the 7 megahertz it could totally crush this game if it wanted to. I think it was just badly coded, uh, which is a shock to me because Electronic Arts is probably my favorite developer and publisher for the Amiga, and it, it, for such an extraordinary game, it's really amazing to me how badly this game was coded from an optimization standpoint. It's not efficient at all. Um, another piece is whenever you disembark from the space station, the bay doors open, and in the past it was unbelievably slow waiting for those doors to open. Now it's just zoop, there they go. Um, let's take a look at what you guys have seen and compare. So I'm now going to, I, I have good feelings about this already. I'm going to go to my navigator and I'm going to leave orbit. Here I am, now I'm using the keys. Now look at that. It's doing exactly what you would expect it to. It is responsive to my keystrokes. Now let's go land on this planet. This is going to be so cool. Alright, here we are. Uh, do I want to orbit the planet? Yes, I do. Uh, okay, there's our little planet. He's spinning. It still looks the same as it did before. All right? Now, let's tell the uh, ship to land. I'm going to select a site. Wow. Okay, so uh, this wasn't obvious before, but just the mouse responsiveness uh, for selecting a site is insane. Okay, and now I'm going to tell it to descend. Do you want to open the viewport? Hell yes, I do. Okay, let's do that. Well, you can tell already. This is feeling pretty good. It's still slow. But it's not painful. Let's see what it looks like when you get into the 3D mapping part. I think by now I might have zoomed in once or twice before, and I'm already down to this level. Still kind of slow, but man, guys, it's got to be at least five or six times faster than before. 
Look at that. That's actually really cool. Okay, so you can see I've landed. Now I'm going to launch. Open the viewport. No, we won't do it this time. Confirm. Yes. Okay, so I'm out here. There I am back at the planet level again. Let's see if I can... Uh, let's leave orbit. Let's see if I can show you just a couple of things that I saw earlier that just kind of blew me away. So what you have to do... It's kind of weird, but this planet is actually a uh, space station. A starport, thank you. Now, look at those doors. You would think, okay, what's the big deal? Man, guys, before, this would take like 30 seconds for those doors to shut. It made this game so painful to play. And, you know, it's supposed to be a slow game. It's supposed to be kind of contemplative. It's all about reading into the story and figuring out how to map these stars and get from place to place. And it, it does take some mental firepower uh, when you come home from work to sit down and play this. And I'm all into that. I think that's awesome. But man, it was so slow. And now I cannot wait to get back into this game and really kick its butt because it is going to be a lot of fun now. I guarantee you. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Captain Disembark. Now, look at this guy cruise. He's just like cruising across the map. And before, this would have taken me just to get from the middle point here to over to this door where you talk to uh, the commanders. That would have probably taken me 30 seconds before. And now we're talking one, two, three, four, f four seconds? I mean, holy smoke. That is so, that's the way it's supposed to be. This is the way the game should work at seven megahertz, to be honest. There's no excuse for the way it's running right now. Um, and it's it's not quite as fast as uh, what I saw the guy doing in his DOS emulator, but it's pretty darn close. I'd say it's uh, it's it's right in his rearview mirror, and it's uh, it's creepy close. Oh, look at that! Sonic totally stole it. Did you see his little foot tapping? Look at that! That oh, he stopped. There he goes. Let me leave that right there. Sonic totally stole that. I'm just saying. Hey guys, it's Intricate from Amiga Love with just some closing thoughts. This was not intended to be a review of Starflight, uh, but I did want to just point out a couple of things that I think are at least interesting that you might find interesting too. I keep referring to the, uh, the DOS version in this game that I saw on YouTube in emulation mode. And it's worth pointing out that the DOS version's uh, graphics were really, really low res. Um, not impressive at all. They're cute, uh, and, and they function very well, but the Amiga blows those graphics away. Now, did they tap into the Amiga's potential? No, they really didn't. The graphics are not impressive at all, but the fact that they fit this whole universe, this whole star system onto a single floppy disk is really unbelievable. It took them over two years, from what I've read, to, to get that accomplished and is pretty impressive. Um, the sound is pathetic uh, for both DOS and Amiga. Amiga is obviously better, but it's still, it's not very noteworthy. Um, however, on the DOS version, it's, com it's entirely keyboard driven the entire game. And so on the, on the Amiga, obviously, you've got the mouse, and they actually coded for that, thank God. And it's, it's really awesome going through the different parts of the game with mouse control. Even the ability to go between yes and no, I don't even have to hit the keyboard with a Y or an N, I can just move the mouse maybe half a centimeter to change my uh, response that it's asking for. Very, very cool, and also on the Amiga side, there are some user interface enhancements that the DOS version never got, and they're basically checkboxes, which allow you to, um, for example, when you're mining and you're in your all-terrain vehicle cruising around and you see the different places where you can pick up minerals, you can tell uh, the, the software to automatically just pick it up when you get to that uh, latitude and longitude. In the DOS version, once you got to that location on the map, 
you actually had to go into the keyboard and give it various commands to pick something up. Yes, please do pl pick that up every single time. Whereas on the Amiga, you just had to drive to that location and it automatically sucked it up into your car. Kind of ridiculous, honestly, that they even had that as an option, but um, that's the way it was done. And thank goodness the Amiga is the way it is uh, in terms of the coding. At the end of the day, though, this was really about a speed comparison, and I hope that it has at least been somewhat educational uh, and interesting, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.